Okay, this video is going to talk about ferrite beads and uh, kind of some of the filter applications for ferrite beads. Uh, there's lots of other applications for inductors and RF toroids and transformers and such, but we're just going to talk mainly about the filter applications for ferrite beads. Uh, and a lot of different forms. A lot of times you'll see these large kind of split core uh, beads that you can put on wires to uh, reduce interference and uh, provide some filtering. In fact, uh, if you look at a lot of the computer cables that you have hooking into your computer, like the USB cables, like this one for my mouse, you know, that's basically a ferrite bead sitting under there. And we're going to talk about what that what job it does there. You'll also see sometimes, you know, just simple little cores like these guys here. Uh, maybe they'll have multiple holes in them, you know, to make like a, a transformer or a winding, like this one here, or making like a little bit of an inductor, or just a simple uh, bead on a wire. Okay. And uh, how do these work? Um, the ferrite material is a high, permeabil high permeability material, so it makes it easy to get larger value inductors when you make a winding out of them. But also, uh, at higher frequencies, they introduce loss. And what that means is that at high frequencies, they essentially start to look like resistors. Okay? So they're not really ideal inductors anymore, they really just look more and more resistive. Okay? And uh, so, in other words, they basically add loss at higher frequencies and sounds like a, a nice thing when it comes to doing filtering. And just to kind of show you the effect of that, I've got a simple little setup here. My signal generator is set up to do a sweep, um, let's see, from 10 kilohertz to 40 megahertz. Okay, and I've got this going into uh, this little block down here that has, you know, basically the signal coming in, going through this wire, uh, coming back out again, and then up into the scope. And I've got the scope set to look at that uh, you know, that's the whole sweep. So essentially the, the signal that's here, okay, is running at 10 kilohertz and then it's sweeping all the way up to 40 megahertz at the other end. Okay, so we, if we put some frequency dependent device in series, you know, right here, we're going to see that effect on the scope. So in fact what I can do is if I reach over here and grab one of these ferrites, I'm just going to grab one that's easy for me to deal with in my hand. So it's got two holes in it, but I'm only going to use one. Okay. And if I uh, kind of pull this wire off of here, slip this ferrite on there, okay, and let's see if I can get this thing to kind of jam its way back in there and stay in, stay in place, okay. So now that that's, uh, that ferrite is just on the wire, I didn't do anything else other than put the ferrite on the wire, let's look at the scope. We can actually see that the response now, you know, 10 kilohertz is really not affected, but I get out to about 20 megahertz here, and I've lost some amplitude. I go out, you know, and you can see it's kind of flattening out. But with doing nothing more than slipping this ferrite on the wire, I've introduced some loss, and that's mainly because it's that's essentially a series resistor at the at those frequencies. In fact, if you add more cores, it, it just gets better. So if I take and uh, uh, open this guy up, throw another core on here, okay, and uh, see if I can make that guy stick. And now I look at the scope. Now I can see by the time I get to uh, to the middle of the screen, which is about 20 megahertz, I'm down about you know, half the signal amplitude, or in this case, that would be uh, you know um, one quarter, you know less less than half the power, you know 6 dB down, right? So um, just by slipping some ferrite cores, on, cores aren't there. <clears throat> now, if you take and uh, put some windings through a core like this one here, you know that makes it a lot more effective. Okay, in fact, if we take them bridge this guy across uh, here. Look at how effective that thing is. So uh, at uh, low frequencies it's passing just fine, but as soon as we get up to uh, a few megahertz or so, I can see that it's really introduced a lot of loss. So that's a pretty effective filter uh, at, for high frequencies. Okay. So another way to think about that is, you know, it's, it's really kind of restricting, you know, the high frequency um, content. And so that's one common uh, use area is for like EMI suppression. And uh, that's one of the reasons why you'd find them like on computer cables. You've got some high speed signals going through some of these computer cables. And if you've watched my video that I, where I talked about um, the frequency content of square waves, you will know that uh, the faster the rising and falling edges, the higher the frequency content you have. Um, so let's look at that same effect uh, and how the ferrites will. will you know, affect the high frequency edges or the high speed edges of signals. So I'll switch my signal generator over here to a square wave that's continuous. Okay, let me connect up my wire here again. And uh, if we go to the scope and 
kind of speed this up here. I can see, uh, let's turn the brightness down to the scope here. Okay. So I can see some really pretty fast edges on this, uh, this square wave here. In fact, so fast I can't really see them. Okay. In fact, it's got about two nanosecond edges if I kind of sp speed the scope way up. And there's five nanoseconds of division. You can see it's less than a division, so it's a really fast edge. Okay. And uh, if I take, um, let's take just as an example that uh, multi turn you know, ferrite here. And if I uh, connect that up here, look at the resulting square wave. You can see that it's really just taken all the edges you know, right out of it and taken and filtered them away, kind of making it almost look you know, closer to sinusoidal. Uh, so what it's really done is remove that high frequency energy uh, from uh, from that particular signal. Uh, so you can actually see, uh, you know, that it's it would help to maybe reduce the radiation of that high frequency coming off the wire and interfering with radios and other things like that. So that's a, a very common use case is for EMI suppression. Uh, also, another good use case would be for like improved power supply decoupling. Uh, here's a, just a just a little schematic example. Maybe I've got an IC here. I've got some local decoupling here. Stick a ferrite bead in series with uh, the power supply coming in. What that will do is two things. One is if there's any you know high frequency energy being generated in this chip and it wants to come leak out the power supply, the decoupling cap can short it to ground. But if this ferrite bead wasn't there, it might also propagate out onto, onto the power supply plane. Okay. So what this does is ensures that this capacitor looks like a lower impedance than the rest of the power supply plane and it makes it more efficient. Also, similarly, be that beads can also block you know, higher frequency energy from coming in through the supply okay, as well. So typically used for you know, some power supply decoupling. Uh, it may also be used for controlling parasitic oscillation. Okay? Uh, those of you that may remember a video that I did uh, about a year ago where we talked about a... Um, this circuit here, let me kind of move over it. And the, the concept in this, the video was talking about analog oscilloscope bandwidth considerations, meaning how much bandwidth do you need in your scope to, uh, to make, to measure, you know, whether you're working on audio signals or whatever. And I had built this little circuit here, which uh, this is a simple audio oscillator. This oscillates at about uh, two and a half kilohertz or so. But it also had a, a parasitic oscillation in it. And uh, so if we kind of switch the scope over to look at that, I've got the signal, excuse me, the circuit built up right here. And if I switch my scope over to look at this, okay, let's kind of get this kind of going here. All right. So you may remember some of these waveforms if you looked at that video. I'll put a link to it uh, in the notes there below the video. And what we're looking at is the base and collector voltages of this circuit down here. So I'm looking at the base right here and the collector voltage here. So the collector, we're just seeing that oscillation, or the, excuse me, the, the regular sinusoidal oscillation as intended. On the base, we're seeing this thing burst into a high frequency oscillation, you know, here and here. And the point of the previous video, what, you know, to talk about bandwidth was that if the bandwidth of the scope was less, like 20 megahertz, I wouldn't see that oscillation where it really is there if I go to full bandwidth. So I talked about a way to kind of get rid of that oscillation and uh, when you're dealing with bipolar transistors, it's often uh, necessary to have some lossy impedance in at least two of the three nodes. And in this case, I really only have it in one. And what I did in that previous video is I added a little bit of resistance in series with the base, an actual physical resistor. But the same thing can be accomplished with the ferrite bead. Okay. So very easy to see the oscillations here. If I come down and look at the circuit, Okay, there's the, the circuit built up on the board. I'm using a simple uh, 2N2222 resist, uh, transistor right here. Okay, and then there's all here's the, my capacitors and, and the resistors and such. So I've got a ferrite B just laying here. If I pick this transistor up, okay, and uh, I'm going to go slip that, uh, that ferrite bead over the base and slide it back in. Okay, now with that, uh, that on the base there without doing anything else, that oscillation is now completely gone. Everything is nice and clean. Uh, because essentially what's happened is uh, by putting that ferrite bead you know, right here in the base, I've introduced some loss at that very high frequency. This thing was oscillating at about 200 megahertz. So now 
at 200 megahertz there's this lossy element in here adding some delay and, and, and reducing that signal amplitude uh, that 200 megahertz signal amplitude to the point where it doesn't induce an oscillation anymore uh, in there so sometimes you'll see circuits that have got ferrite beads you know sitting on a lead and that uh, is most likely why is just to suppress you know some parasitic oscillation like that so uh, so that's another uh, kind of important application also you know to reduce RF coupling you know from circuits I mean if you're d designing like an audio amplifier for a microphone that goes into an RF transmitter you might use some ferrite beads on the power supplies and on the audio lines to keep the RF signal from coupling back into the amplifier itself. Now there are different uh, material types. Um, they're called, sometimes they're called the mixes. And the, these different mixes are good for different frequency ranges. So you'll see mixes like 43, 31, 77. So there's a whole series of numbers. And each of these mixes are good for particular frequency ranges. So what you probably want to do is kind of look at some of the more popular manufacturers like ferrite, uh, is one fair dash right uh, fair right uh, Amidon Murata there's several other manufacturers but they've got a lot of application information about you know which mixes or which material mixes are suitable for various frequencies that you might be operating with so you may want to consult uh, some of their website material as well so anyway I hope this was a, a good introduction to what ferrites are and some of the applications of where they can be used for EMI suppression, like limiting the, the, the speed of some edges that, uh, so they don't radiate a lot of energy, uh, improve some power supply decoupling, you know, control parasitic oscillation, etc. So, uh, of course, any questions, let me know. Uh, but again, this is just intended to be just a little bit of an introduction uh, to the topic. Uh, thanks for watching.